So let me tell you a little story about my mother. Now, my mother is not an atheist, but she very easily could have become an atheist. What you have out there today, especially in places like YouTube and the Internet, is kind of a grassroots atheist movement. Uh, a lot of these people, you know, some of them are atheists five years in the making, and they, they go on Twitter and they start Twitter sites and YouTube channels and things like that. It's kind of a grassroots atheist movement, and it sort of has its generation as a pop culture phenomenon in guys like Richard Dawkins and Christopher Hitchens. What they did was they, they took some of the ideas from, let's say, Bertrand Russell, and they popularized them. They put them in the general public. They put them out there for, for not necessarily mass consumption, but pretty close to mass consumption. So, for example, if this were, you know, 1973, uh, I, I'm bringing this up to point out that my mom was of a completely different generation. But had it been 1973 and she's watching like John, The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, you know, and like some guy comes on, t on there and starts talking about uh, how the Bible has endorsed slavery or something like that. That just didn't happen in the 70s or the 60s when my mom was actually a partaker of the, of the general culture. 60s, 70s. There was no such thing as popular atheists. Now there are. You turn on a show like Bill Maher, you could very easily see Bill Maher himself. You could very easily have him throwing out ideas that are related to atheism. Um, and any number of his guests, like maybe one out of every 20 guests or two out of every 20 guests is going to be some sort of fairly well-known atheist. Which means there was an atheism out there for, for mass consumption. So someone like my mother could have easily latched onto it. This was not true in the 70s. This is a relatively new social phenomenon. It had its genesis in Richard Dawkins and Christopher Hitchens. I mean, there were some other, other things to it. But that's when it really took root as a, as a kind of pop culture phenomenon. Something that you could turn on the TV, you know, you turn on just a regular show and you'll, you might see an atheist on there talking about this or that. This was not the case in the 60s and the 70s when my mom was coming of age and raising a family and partaking of the culture at large. Had it been, she could very easily become an atheist. That's where I was going with this whole thing, with this whole setup. Very easily become an atheist. She would have resonated with a lot of the ideas that the atheists talk about, particularly the anti-religious, anti-clerical type of things. As a matter of fact, as, as a, she is very similar in some ways to some of the... There are a lot of ex-fundamentalist Christian atheists who are now atheists. Uh, I would say a big chunk of them, maybe 65, 70% of the ones I interact with on Twitter who are atheists were, were raised fundamentalist Christian. Now, my mother was not raised fundamentalist Christian, but she was raised in a similar way. She was an Italian immigrant. My, my grandfather on my mother's side came over from Italy when he was 16 years old. True story, 16 years old, didn't speak a word of English. Supported the entire extended family back in southern Italy. Got a job as uh, sweeping elevators, lower east side, of, lower east side of Manhattan. No, they love them there. I go to, I've gone, I've gone back there. I've gone to Calabria. Sono Calabrese. Gone back to Calabria and hung out with them. They, they revere him. He's considered a king there because he kept the entire extended family alive with the tiny little bits of money he made sweeping elevator floors in Manhattan. Moved to Boston. Uh, God went back to Italy actually to find a wife, found a wife in Italy, then moved to Boston and raised a family there, Italian immigrants. So my mother was raised as an immigrant in an immigrant culture, lower, lower middle class, socioeconomic. She'll tell you poor, uh, I guess debatably poor. I don't really know. I wasn't there. But yeah, I mean, certainly not rich and not very well educated. And really, really, really religious. My mom wanted to be a nun when she was growing up, and, and when she was when she was in grade school, middle school. And she'll tell you stories of how she found the library card, and that was her that was her salvation. 
That was that because that opened the door to her to a whole other worlds, and she went to the library every day and would read books, and that's what enabled her to educate herself and get out of, uh, again, not necessarily poverty. She'll say poverty, but not poverty, lower socioeconomic. Now, so she considered education, you know, the most important thing as a as an avenue to success and as an ad. ad as an avenue of achievement. 